Good morning. My name is Rick Lemieux, and I'm here to talk about why protecting organizational digital value and resiliency through culture is important for all organizations, regardless of size, scale, and complexity. A little bit about myself. I am the co-founder of the DVMS Institute, and I serve as its chief product officer. I have a full 40 years of experience teaching organizational leadership how to deliver the outcomes that stakeholders and government regulators expect. And I've written over 70 articles on the topic of cyber risk management, which you can find on the DVMS Institute website. A little bit about our mission and vision. Our mission is to help organizations of any size, scale, or complexity create, protect, and deliver you know, their digital value. Our vision is to teach organizations uh, in a holistic approach to protecting organizational digital value and resiliency through its culture. So let's start off the conversation or the presentation about talking about what is digital value. As it states here, you know, the digital landscape has changed significantly over the past few decades. We've all experienced that. Fundamentally ordering how governments and businesses, you know, create and deliver value. I'll give you three examples. You know, the first is e-commerce. You know, this marked a significant milestone in the evolution of, of you know, delivering digital business value. Amazon and eBay were kind of key contributors to that. Mobile computing transformed the way, you know, businesses create and capture value. Um, we, we've seen a lot of transformation in that area, especially with the advent of the iPhone and the Android and so on and so forth, the intelligent phone or the smartphone. And then last but not least, we've got the emergence of AI. And it is, it is clearly becoming a powerful force in the digital landscape. And it's, it's set to dramatically raise the value bar. The things that we'll be able to do with AI, you know, from a business perspective, will, you know, deliver significant value. There's also significant risk associated with that as well that I don't think we know enough about yet, but we'll see how that, uh, how that evolves. So what are digital risk, right? The digital you know, age has brought, you know, an unprecedented amount of value, if you will, transforming how we live, work, and interact with people. But you know, however, you know, these, adv these advancements, you know, come with, you know, some inherent risk. Those risks include culture, which I consider to be, you know, an organization's top risk as it shapes the identity, you know, and influences how actions are carried out within the organization. So if your culture is not right, it's going to be really hard to make sure to ensure that your risk management approach is right. Uh, cybersecurity is another pressing risk. You know, as our reliance on technology grows, you know, so does the potential for attacks against those technologies. So it's really important for us to ensure that we have, you know, the capabilities in-house or through a third-party provider to, you know, manage that that technology landscape to ensure that it at least has everything known to man, you know, included in it as far as software updates and configurations and multi-factor authentication and so on and so forth. Yeah, you know, just the interconnectedness of digital systems also introduces a whole new set of risk. You know, supply chain tax uh, tax are one example. I mean, as organizations rely on their supply chain, which is just about every organization today, you know, we really have to fact that it that into our risk analysis. And and sometimes it's really hard to figure it out because it's so complex that you can't figure it out in, in your head. You really have to go through a fairly extensive assessment process to understand how this all fits together and what the potential risks are associated with that. Data privacy is another area that I think has gotten some really good attention, probably not as much as it should. I think right now the governments are focused in on kind of stabilizing the environment so that organizations can at least have a chance to defend themselves against these risks that are impacting businesses left and right. But data privacy is really important because it involves, you know, this, this vast amount of data that's being collected and shared uh, by social media and other companies. And sometimes that turns out to be misused and, and you know, using it to exploit um, opportunity for the bad guys. And then social engineering, you know, this all goes back to, you know, exploiting human behavior through phishing emails and, you know, impersonating people and so on and so forth. So. That's another area that we really didn't have to deal with prior to digital, but is something that is you know, top of mind for all of us today. 
So why do we need a new paradigm for protecting digital value? All right, well, it's clear. I think everyone probably will agree with this, is that traditional approaches to cyber risk management are no longer sufficient to address the complex threats that you know, businesses face today. Yeah, you know, the core of the paradigm is recognizing that cyber risk management is not a cost center. It's a strategic imperative for the business. It's, you know, it's motherhood and apple pie to the business. It has to be factored into everything the business does. You know, one of the key elements of the new paradigm is resilience. I mean, we all, I think we're all pretty much in, you know, in agreement that we're going to get attacked. Some, somehow or another, we're going to get attacked. There's people, people probably living in our systems already, but we need to know what we're going to do when that attack creates an incident or a breach that impacts our services. How are we going to recover from those services quickly and restore the value that we were delivering prior to the attack happening? All right, to understand this, you know, it's clear that the organizations need to understand you know, the new global regulations and, and their own in the internal digital quality goals. They need to establish goals. All right. So the regulations will tell you, here's what you need to have in place as a minimum that the government is recommending, you know, to protect, you know, your role in the context of the government or, you know, the country where you live. All right. And then to go beyond that is really tied back to your own business goals. You know, what are we trying to do? How are we trying to do it? And what do we need to do to ensure that it gets done in the context of digital risk? All right. Clearly, organizations need to utilize these best practice framework standards and systems, you know, to deliver, you know, predictable outcomes. That's why the frameworks and standards and systems were created to give you some guidance, you know, on how to go about at least, you know, stabilizing your environment and then giving you the flexibility to optimize that environment over time. And as I probably stated a few times already, and we'll state a few more times as we go through the rest of the slides, it's about creating a culture, you know, capable of, you know, integrating digital value protection into their daily work routines. Um, it's it, it has to become part of your daily business DNA, you know, so if you see something, say something, if you see something that, you know, could be improved or that you think might be a potential risk, you know, that is, you know, if we've got everyone in the organization doing that, we can at least stay ahead or stay on par with, with you know, with the bad guys because they're doing that. They're looking for all your vulnerabilities and whatever else. So why not? Why shouldn't we be doing it as well and then mitigating those those vulnerabilities uh, to give them less of a landscape to uh, to be successful on. What is leadership's role, you know, in protecting digital value? You know, I think I've talked about this a few times, you know, that organizational leadership, you know, sets the cultural tone for protecting the organization's value, right? If the organizational leadership is not practicing and preaching and practicing this day in and day out, then it's not going to get done because people won't do something that leadership isn't doing themselves, right? So leadership really needs to, you know, communicate these complex security concepts to both technical and non-technical audiences. We need to create a common business language that everyone can understand. And then each of those audiences can take a deeper dive into that, into that information, depending upon whether they're technical or non-technical. Uh, organizations need to adapt strategies and systems, you know, to deal with the ever-changing, you know, digital and threat landscape. Really, really important. I mean, it, it, this is, once again, another part of the organization's DNA. It really needs to continuously monitor and measure everything about their digital environment um, so that they can adapt to any changes that might be necessary based on changes in the threat landscape. That could be you know, the internal threat landscape, an internal threat, it could be an external, you know, threat landscape, uh, you know, and that could even be a, a change in regulatory and rules and whatever. And it could be the threat landscape itself. They clearly need to invest in training and development so that all employees understand the fundamentals of digital business. We assume people understand what digital is. I think a lot of people think it's magic, you know, rightfully so, but they really need to understand how it works, not in great detail, but at the surface level. They need to understand why it has so many risks associated with it. And they need to more importantly understand what their role is in helping identify and mitigate those risks. 
So why do organizations, you know, the, why, why is the first thing they need to do is identify and classify all the digital risk, all right? Well, you know, as I stated earlier, a company's, you know, strategy really depends on its culture, its ability to put in place security controls, and its ability to have a skilled workforce capable of, you know, mitigating, identifying and mitigating those risks that I talked about earlier. So in order to, you know, get things going, they need to know where they're at. You can only start where you're at. You can't start anywhere else. So you need to conduct these comprehensive assessments, you know, to identify the vulnerabilities and be able to mitigate those, those vulnerabilities or those risks. These assessments include assessing your culture, right? What is your culture? It basically, it, it's a reflection of your employee attitudes and behaviors, you know, towards protecting, you know, digital business or their attitudes towards cybersecurity in general. Uh, what are the cybersecurity controls? These are the things that you you put in place in order to you know manage access to your systems, manage access to data. All right, the NIST Cyber, the National Institute of Standards and Technologies NIST has created lots of publications and guidance on specific controls that you can put in place in order to you know to protect those assets. They also have uh, put forward a new framework called the NIST Cybersecurity Framework which describes the six business functions you need to have in place to manage, you know, organizational cyber risk and so on. So you have to measure those controls. You have to understand where you are so you know where you need to go. And then employee knowledge, right? This goes back to, you know, what I was saying earlier, you know, the employees will play a significant role in helping the organization identify and mitigate its risk to protect its value. So they need to be trained on how to do that. It doesn't require expensive, you know, certification training and all sorts of other technical training. It really involves helping them understand the business aspects of, of cyber, if you will, and those risks and what they can be doing, you know, as, as regular employees, not IT professionals, not cybersecurity professionals to identify and mitigate those risks. So last but not least is why is it important to connect, you know, the, the, the behavior of your digital system and the structure of that system to your culture, all right? And I'll talk about that in this slide here. So as it states, you know, technology often takes the center stage, you know, as the key issue, you know, in the cyber threat world, you know, yet beneath, beneath all that, you know, there's there's the less tangible, you know, uh, component of organizational culture. And, and you probably have picked up on the theme throughout the presentation that culture, in my opinion, and in the opinion of the DVMS Institute, is probably your biggest risk that you really need to deal with first. Once you got your culture done, the rest of it's uh, you know, exercise in engineering and training. Really, really straightforward, really, I don't want to call it simple because nothing is simple, but I think it will be a lot easier if you didn't have your culture in place. As it states here, culture is your organizational DNA. It shapes, you know, your identity and influencing actions. It's how things get done, basically how work gets done. And so, you know, organizations spend a lot of time, you know, assessing their culture and developing their culture in terms of building products and delivering services and, you know, customer, customer service, customer value, and so on. But they need to factor it that into that, you know, this whole risk, cyber risk thing, because, you know, that, that, you know, underpins all of those other things that they that the culture is designed to, you know, to impact or to, you know, basically provide a positive result on. So it is the organizational DNA and it needs to be dealt with. Um, culture also fosters, fosters a, you know, a sense of shared responsibility. We're all in this together. We're not individuals. We're, we're a team. We're working together to deliver services and value to our customers. And we're working together to protect that value. So, cult, you know, establishing that as part of your culture reinforces that commitment to each other, which is something that is core and mission critical to uh, protecting digital value. Uh, it certainly influences employee, employee behavior. You know, I mean, let's face it. I mean, culture in general, you know, influences employee behavior. If the employees feel that there's a disconnect with management or leadership, you know, the they'll act differently. They might even act in a way that, you know, is not good for the company or good for themselves. So you really need to, you know, establish, you know, a good culture that encourages good employee behavior. Culture is also all about trust, you know, as trust is, as it states here, the cornerstone of digital value protection. All right. 
It's all about establishing and building trust with our clients, with each other. All right. I mean, I don't know about you, but I, I'm having a difficult time trusting just about anything these days with the level of attacks that are happening, both personally and professionally. I mean, getting text messages and emails and social media posts and whatever else, you just don't know what's real anymore. So it's important for businesses to make customers feel comfortable that when something comes from them, it is it has come from them and that it's trustable. Culture is clearly about leadership. I think I said this a few times, you know, leadership shapes the organizational culture. You know, culture isn't a one and done. It's a continuous effort, you know, that requires adaptation and constant measurement. You can't fix what you can't measure. So you need to measure your culture. You need to measure your controls. You need to measure your skills on a continuous basis. And you need to ensure that they're in alignment with the corporate strategy in regards to digital, in regards to digital risk, and so on and so forth. So it's just a, it's it's a, it's not a one and done. It ha- it's it needs to happen on a continual basis. Um, clearly, by doing all these things, you know you're able to you know establish organizational resilience. And this goes back to what I stated earlier that you know if you don't if if you don't have all these things in place and you get attacked, you're not going to be able to recover. So this, you know, basically determines, you know, you know, your organizational resilience. And last but not least, but also very important is culture is a strategic investment because it's designed to protect your organizational reputation, clearly your financial stability and your competitive advantage in the marketplace. You know, so organizations who view this as strategic invest- investment should be marketing it that way, saying, you know, we care enough about you to protect you know, your your information to protect our relationship with you, to protect our services so that you are never disrupted. Things like that become really important for businesses going forward. So to wrap things up, what I've done here is put together, you know, kind of a summary of the uh, eight principles, you know, that are critical to protecting organizational, you know, digital value and resiliency through culture. Uh, clearly, the first is to establish a vision, all right? So, that, so this needs to come from senior leadership. They need to be um, putting forward, you know, what their vision is and why this should become your vision. And what is your role in helping the organization realize its vision? Very, very important because it's the starting point and it's the end point at the same time that organizations need to build capabilities around. They certainly need to conv- cultivate a culture capable of supporting that. And that is where leadership comes in, because if they're doing it and they're promoting it and they're integrating it in as part of their day to day management capabilities and structures, then employees will will follow. Um, They need to empower employee employees with skills and knowledge so that they can become contributors, um, you know, to the cyber risk management plan. In, in protecting that value. So see something, say something, you know, identify areas for improvement. You know, it's all, you know, part of what an employee is responsible for. Well, that clearly requires an investment in training. You know, I think we've talked about that one quite a few times and that is core and mission critical to getting going and continue going, you know, as far as managing risk is concerned. We really need to have an environment that forces collaboration, you know, break down these silos, get people talking to other people, helping everybody understand, you know, what my role is and who I'm dependent upon and who's dependent upon me. That's where collaboration really kicks in and is a powerful enabler, you know, for organizations who want to protect their digital value. Um, clearly, you need to prioritize risk. And this, once you've done all your assessments and you've identified all your risk, there are some that are need to float to the top immediately because they will have a critical impact to the business should they become disrupted. And then others might, you know, be be, okay, be core but not mission critical and can be dealt with at a later date. Um, organizations need to collect and leverage data. Data is how they can make informed and smart decisions. Um, they can't just say, oh, let's go buy the latest and whatever this and do that. That will solve all our problems. And it, it won't. They need to truly understand where they are, where the assessments come in, and they need to leverage the data that's being presented to them by the assessments to making smart decisions. They need to embrace innovation, all right? And and innovation and change are kind of interconnected. 
because the the threat landscape has moved this into a into a model where changes become the new norm. Uh, because, you know, if we get attacked and we need to move quickly and we haven't planned for this, you know, we're going to have to go through a change. And sometimes, you know, t t traditional changes in organization may take days, months, years in some cases. We don't have that time anymore. We, you know, we have to embrace innovation. We have to embrace change as the new norm. And then last but not least, but also very important is we need to consider the customer. Everything we do has to be from the customer's viewpoint. All right. So we need to be you know, real sensitive to that as we develop our strategy, as we train our organization, you know, it's all about the customer at the end of the day. It's not about Rick versus Joe or Sally versus Sue or this department versus that department. It's, it's about the customer. And that's where we need to take our employees and, you know, not only in day-to-day -day business operations, but certainly in the world of managing or identifying and mitigating the risk that could potentially impact the business. If you need to reach me, you can reach me at the email stated on this slide support at dvmsinstitute.com. And just to let you know that we will be releasing a white paper uh, and a publication around this topic uh, in January. And be more than happy to get you a free copy of the white paper and let you know where you can go and uh, purchase the book. But it provides all the detail behind what I covered today. So I think you'll find it enjoyable and interesting. And I think it would be a, a good book to drop on your CEO's desk or your CIO's desk because I think it's something they, it's, they should read and understand and take action on. Thank you very much. and You have a great day.